What's up guys, it's Phoenix Master One and today I bring to you guys the ultimate breeding guide. In this video I'll be discussing everything that you need to know for becoming an ultimate Pokemon breeder and for having very powerful Pokemon with perfect IVs and natures. So yeah, let's begin. Speaking of the basics, you first need to learn how to get an egg by breeding two Pokemon. You just cannot breed two random Pokemon from your box and then get an egg. You can breed two Pokemon only if they are of opposite gender and if they belong to the same egg group. For example, if you breed a male Bagon with a female Axew, you will be getting an egg. And after you hatch it, you will be getting an Axew from the egg. Also, the Pokemon which hatched from the egg will always belong to the species of the mother, not the father. So if you bred a male Bagon with a female Axew, you will always get Axews from the egg, not Bagons. This breeding was only possible because both Pokemon were of different gender and belonged to the same dragon egg group. By now you must be wondering what are egg groups and how many of them are there. Well, egg groups are categories which determine which Pokemon are able to interbreed. They are similar to types of Pokemon, but a Pokemon may belong to either one or two egg groups. Egg groups cannot be changed and they are biologically determined. Also, the egg group is preserved by the evolutionary line of a Pokemon. And yeah, there are 14 egg groups till now. Also, if you want to know which Pokemon belong in which egg groups, just click the link in the video description which will take you to the Bulbapedia's egg group category page. So here, we are done with understanding the basics of breeding. Now you can go to the daycare center on route 7 where you can breed and get your eggs. Once you have put two breedable Pokemon in daycare, you just need to spend some time outside. The Pokemons will take some time to produce an egg, which will depend on how well they get along with each other. Now that you have got your Pokemon egg, hatching it quickly is what you need to learn. Each Pokemon egg has different required number of steps that will hatch it. For example, you will take a lot less time in hatching a Froakie egg than hatching a Gibble egg. However, you could make it easy by keeping a Pokemon with Flame Body or Magma Armor as its ability in your party. But the abilities do not stack up. So for example, you are hatching an Eevee Egg with a Fletchinder in your team who has Flame Body. You will now only take 4800 steps for hatching the egg instead of taking 9000 steps. So you could say that keeping a Pokemon with Flame Body or Magma Armor in your party reduces the steps up to 50%. This is very useful for Pokemon breeders. Ditto is the best Pokemon used for breeding as it does not care about the gender and the egg groups. It can breed with literally any Pokemon in the game except for legendaries and it will always give you an egg of a Pokemon with whom you breed it and does not matter which gender it is or which egg group the Pokemon belongs to. You could even breed genderless Pokemon like Staryu and Rotom to get eggs of them. Instead of using any other Pokemon for breeding, you should stick to Ditto for most of your Pokemon breeding. So, now we are done with the basic side of Pokemon breeding. Now let's go to the competitive aspect of breeding. First, I will be telling you how you can get perfect natures and can pass natures from parent to the child. In this generation, there is this mechanic that if you give an Everstone to the parent whose nature you want to pass to the child, the nature will be passed without any fail. So let me demonstrate this to you with an example. Here I have my modest nature Fletchinder and an adamant nature Ditto. So to have an adamant nature Fletchling, all I need to do is to give this Ditto an Everstone and just breed them. So the Fletchling that I got from this egg is adamant nature now. So as you could see, the nature from the Ditto is passed to the Fletchling without any fail if you give it an Everstone. Getting perfect nature on a Pokemon is very important for a competitive player. If you have any questions regarding this section, make sure to read the description or just ask me in the comments. Without a perfect nature, a Pokemon is most likely gonna fail in a competitive battle.
Hidden abilities are the special abilities which many Pokemon have access to. And you could get Pokemon with hidden abilities in Hoed Battles and in Front Safari. But the real question is that how do you pass these hidden abilities to the child? Well, in previous generation, only females were able to pass down the hidden ability. But in Pokemon X and Y, there is some chance that the hidden ability can be passed down from the father to the child only if the father breeds with a ditto. So we could say that hidden abilities can be passed down easily with both mother and father. But in case of father, the father needs to breed with a ditto. Keep this thing in mind. Egg moves are exclusive moves which a Pokemon can learn only if it's bred with a specific Pokemon from its egg group. For example, if you breed your Charizard with a Dragonite who knows Dragon Dance, you'll get a Charmander from an egg who will be knowing Dragon Dance. And as of Pokemon X and Y, even males can pass down the egg moves. So once you have got your Charmander who knows Dragon Dance, you can now breed it with a Ditto and from now on every Charmander that you get from the egg will be knowing Dragon Dance. So you don't need that Dragonite anymore. So this is how you can learn and pass down the egg moves. This is most important part of breeding for a competitive player. This whole process is very time consuming and only trainers with patience can do this. So let me start off by telling what are IVs and what do they do. IVs are individual values. They are like genes in Pokemon. Every Pokemon has 6 IVs for its 6 stats. One for each stat you could say. An IV of a Pokemon in one stat can range from 0 to 31. 31 is max IV. These IVs determine how strong your Pokemon will be and IVs also influence a Pokemon's main stats. Max IVs differentiate a good Pokemon from a best Pokemon. Now you might be wondering how you could know IVs of your Pokemon. Well, in Killout City's Pokemon Center, on the left side there is a judge who will tell you your Pokemon's IVs. He will not directly tell you the values, but instead he will hint them. If he says that a Pokemon's potential lies in a specific stat, or a Pokemon's specific stats are good, that means that the Pokemon has max IVs in those stats which he just appreciated. You just cannot find Pokemon with all max IVs in Wild. You will need to breed one. So listen closely as I tell you steps for getting flawless Pokemon with max IVs in multiple stats. Choose a Pokemon of your choice which you wish to breed. For this video I will be using this Fletchinder which has Gale Wings and is Adam in nature by chance. I caught this one in Front Safari. At the end of the day I would like to have a Fletchling as the end product of this whole breeding which has 5 max IVs so that I can get a flawless Gale Wings Talonflame. In this generation there is a new mechanic. If either of your parents hold Destiny Knot, the parents will pass down whopping 5 IVs to the baby Pokemon. With this item, it has become very easy to chain IVs onto the Pokemon and easily receive a perfect Pokemon. You can get Destiny Knot in Silent City's hotel by going upstairs and talking to the lady near stairs. After reaching Elite 4, you have access to Killed City, which is home to Front Safari. The best thing about Front Safari is that every Pokemon you find in this place will be having max 31 IVs in any 2-3 stats out of 6, and that is guaranteed. If you do not know how Front Safari works, it simply works on the fact how many friends you have on your 3DS, and each friend has 3 different Pokemon in his or Front Safari. If you have a friend who has normal type as a Safari, you might want to see if he has any Dittos in there. Cause like I said, Ditto is best Pokemon for breeding. For this video, I have my friend Tom, who has normal type friend Safari and has Ditto in there also. So I will be catching a lot of Dittos for their natures and IVs. Now I have caught box full of Dittos. I have nicknamed them based on which max IVs they possess. They all have different nature and different max IVs. 
So I'm gonna be using a Ditto with three max IVs. Yeah, you can even find Dittos with three, four max IVs in this place, which is pretty awesome. Now what we are gonna be doing is we'll be giving this Everstone to Fletchinder and the Destiny Knot to Ditto. Everstone will ensure the adamant nature and Destiny Knot will pass down any five IVs from parents to our child Fletchling. The general strategy is to breed two parents together until their child has all relevant flawless IVs. Once that child is bred, breed the child with the final parent until you get your final target. Along the way, if a child is born that outclasses either of the parents, replace that child with the inferior parent to increase your chances of getting the desired product. Remember, you have to preserve the nature of your child by giving a parent an Everstone. And also make sure that in this whole process, one of the parent is holding the destiny knot. So after breeding Fletchinder and Ditto, finally I have 4 batches of egg. And after hatching those 20 eggs, I finally got a fledgling which had 3 IVs from the parent. Now what I'm gonna do is substitute this fledgling with the Fletchinder which only had 2 max IVs. I will now have to breed this fledgling and the ditto until I get a fledgling which has all the IVs from its parents. After breeding fledgling and the ditto, I got a fledgling after 30 eggs which has all IVs from the parents, except for HP IV. So now we are gonna be replacing the ditto with this amazing fledgling which has more max IVs than the ditto. You could now see that the both parents have a lot more max IVs than the initial parents. So Ditto's job is now done. This is how you chain IVs by replacing the parents with better child who has more max IVs. Now after I have done this, I can ensure that all Flizzling that I get by breeding these two Pokemon will at least have like 3-4 max IVs. And at some point, I have a good faith that I'll be getting a flawless fledgling that might even take an hour or so. So I'll see you guys when I get my flawless fledgling. I'm back guys and after doing this process for like 3 hours and I have hatched more than 50 eggs. So finally I have got a fledgling who has 5 max IVs. So let me show you guys this thing. Okay, so it has max IVs in HP, in attack in defense and uh, in special defense and speed as well so this is what we call a flawless pokemon who has 45 max ivs in the stats which it uses most so if you have any doubt in this section make sure to read the description which has very clear instructions and i know at first this whole thing can be very confusing and tedious but it's all about how lucky you get with the IVs and how well you replace the parents with the superior children which you get from the eggs. But eventually, if you understand this process, this whole thing will become easy for you and you'll be able to get flawless Pokemon. If you still have any doubts, make sure to ask me in the comments and I'll try to answer them ASAP. So yeah guys, and I'm done with this ultimate breeding guide, it really took me a long time to make this and edit this whole thing. So I really hope this guide helped you guys and I'll try to make this guide very best and to the point at the same time. So if this guide helped you even a bit, make sure to leave a like, a generous comment down below and subscribe for more guides. Also make sure to tell me which guide you want me to do next. And uh, yeah, so I'm out.